As we move away from the country and collect in urban areas, the more we lose those skills and deep understandings offered by our interaction with nature. And so too, our environmental and wildlife conservation efforts have suffered. In an effort to get back on an even keel, to get back on track, in the manner of Aldo Leopold and Teddy Roosevelt, we bring you Corks Outdoors, hosted by best-selling author and outdoor writer Cork Graham. This episode brought to you by Remington Arms, Federal Ammunition, Tritronics. Hi, this is Cork Graham at Corks Outdoors, and I want to welcome you to our first episode. And in this episode, we'll be hunting snow geese with Blake Bunell. I also want to introduce you to uh, my buddy here. You'll be seeing quite a bit of him. His name's Ziggy. He's only seven months old. And you'll be seeing him going from a point of going through training with a normal house training, etc., all the way through to pheasants out in the field on good points. And we'll be taking him through the process of how we got from point A all the way to the end of training, which actually never ends. So uh, I want you to enjoy the, uh, the latest show with Blake. It's a great opportunity to see some really good snow goose calling, and you'll be able to see it from the very beginning when we see the geese to the point where we're able to jump out of the blind and shoot. So good hunting, and see you in the future. Cheers. As soon as they start uh, flying, <clears throat> these birds out here normally, you'll, start, you'll see them a little bit after shoot time, but for the most part, these are all what we call transitional birds, so they come, the refuges are four to six miles away from here, so we'll get, you know, traffic and everything, you know, between 7.30, 7 o'clock, right around there is when they really start flying, you know. They're the first birds that come out, the specks will come out first, and then the snows come out after that. Most of our traffic comes from the north, from Sacramento Refuge, over on this side of the freeway. Okay. And how many uh, decoys do you put up? Uh, this right here is about a little over 1,100, and these are uh, full-body uh, decoys made by Bushnell Final Approach decoys. Uh, are they flocked, or do you need flocked? Uh, the spec decoys are flocked. They're, they're the FFDs, flock decoys, but the um, snow goose decoys, they're just full body with a real good um, uh, paint scheme on them that's actually, it's actually put on uh, with, uh, with heat, and uh, it sets up for like 30 days before they bring it off the shelves and stuff. So it tries to minimize you know, the, the glare and everything from moisture that builds up in the morning on the decoys. Okay, cool. And the types of geese that you get out here? We get the snows and the specks. And uh, the snow geese, there's two different species. The subspecies of the snow geese is the Ross goose. And then we have uh, the uh, white fronts, or they call them speckle bellies. But the speckle bellies, they uh, <coughs> uh, two different kinds out here. Get the tule goose, and that's the uh, bird that is protected up here um, up till December uh, uh, 14th in a special management area that I'm over here on the east side of the freeway. But uh, um, for the most part, they're not protected on this side and everything, but it's a tule goose with a population of the valley here, right about 11,000 birds. Now, the difference between a tule and a speck, how do you, how do you recognize the difference? It's not, they haven't really, uh, scientifically, they haven't really, you know, uh, studied it well enough to know if it's a subspecies or a whole different species in its own. So, they just don't have the data on that. They know it. They just know it's a, uh, you know, kind of like back when we had the closures on the cacklers and we had the closures on or not the cackler, excuse me, the illusions and the honkers, you know, but now this uh, tule goose population is getting more and more and more to where hopefully within the next couple of years they're going to lift that restrict. Now the recommended loads and uh, gauges, or how do you like to, to shoot? Well, out here, you know, what we recommend is the BB, the 3-inch 12-gauge uh, BB. However, I, I do have uh, two hunts a year that I do with just four tens only. You know, mm -hmm. we just have a four ten hunt, what we call it, what I call a four ten hunt, where we just shoot four tens only on the birds. But for the most part, the uh, round that works really good out here is the 12, 12 gauge three inch BBs and either the ounce and a quarter uh, loads or the ounce and an eight. And you shoot BB out of the four tens also, or? Uh, the four tens, what they do because they really don't make a waterfowl load in a four ten. But uh, what, what we normally do is the guys will 
get uh, factory Winchester holes in number four lead, and they'll pull the lead out, and then they'll put in bismuth or in Kent impact, uh, you know, ones or twos. Okay. Got you into specific well, respects. Well, my, 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 my guiding for fishing and hunting started way back when I was 12 years old, and, uh, you know, my dad got me into it, had a duck club, took me out there three times a week, and, you know, lo and behold, here I am now. So he's the reason I'm out here. You know, it's all his fault. Ready, ready. Ready, ready, over the top. Right now, three over here. Let's put that other check over there. Jumped on at the back.